In the last episode, I showed you how to set the correct Z-offset easily by using the familiar paper method. However, the printheads also have an offset in the X and Y direction. One way to determine the offset is to print a sample using all available printheads. Afterwards, you simply measure the printed piece to figure out in which direction the offset needs an adjustment. To do so, you can print what they call vernier scales, which are quite easy to use as you can basically read on the scale in which direction you have to adjust the offsets. This method is very cost effective, since you don't need any extra equipment for it. However, it also takes a very long time, about 10 to 12 minutes per print. Plus, for a satisfying result, you have to print it at least two times probably even more. Offset adjustment can be done more precisely and way faster by using a microscope. To do this, you move the nozzle over a USB microscope and then you can see exactly where the nozzle is located. Probably down to a hundredth of a millimeter or so and this you can set the offset very precisely and quickly. Personally, I prefer this method because it is very convenient. Therefore, I am going to show you in this episode how it works. The fact that you will need a microscope for this method is bearable. Because in one of the upcoming episodes, I will show you how to use the same microscope to set the offsets automatically by means of computer-controlled machine vision. I keep talking about tool offsets all the time, but what is this all about actually? Offsets are a rather complicated topic and therefore I will try to explain it in a somewhat easy way. Tool offsets indicate the position of the tooltip in relation to the reference point of the entire toolhead. Without defining this any further at this point, as it would totally go beyond the scope, let's take a closer look at our E3D tool changer instead. The G31 command in config.g, for example, tells you that the Z end stop got an offset value of 0 to the reference point just mentioned. That means that the reference point is located at the trigger point of the Z end stop. And that in turn means that the tool offsets are basically all related to this Z end stop. The value we specify for each offset actually describes the distance to the Z end stop on the toolhead. I hope that this was somewhat comprehensible. If you want to know more about this topic, comment down below. Maybe I will make a video about it. Any generic USB microscope will do the trick. Lower the bed on the homed and cooled down tool changer to make room for the microscope to fit under the individual tool heads. Because the print bed will move up and down during tool changes, I secure the microscope and the cable onto the bed with clamps. This way it won't move on its own or if I accidentally touch the cable. You can use blue tape or a weight too. I'm working on a Mac. So I used the free software OBS and a Google crosshair image as an overlay. If you are working on a Windows 10 machine, the built-in camera app offers an overlay via the option Framing Grid. Choose Crosshair for best results. I repeat, the printer and all tools need to be cooled down, otherwise you risk damaging the microscope with the heat. The next step is to pick a tool and move it somewhere to the mid, the exact position doesn't matter at the moment. Then. You need to adjust the tool and the microscope to get a real good close-up of the tip of the nozzle. Here you can see me adjusting the focus and the tool position, and even the crosshair overlay, to bring the nozzle of tool 0 exactly in the middle of the crosshair. Beware of the rotation of the microscope too. It will be confusing if you jog the nozzle to the desired direction, but on the screen it moves in another way. Then. Via right click on the controls, you can set a very low interval for the X and Y direction. 
I did choose 0.01mm. If you jog the printhead now, you can see the nozzle moving in the crosshair. Bring the nozzle off to a zero exactly in the middle and take a note or copy the X and Y position shown in the web UI. With these coordinates, create a new macro. I gave it a useful name, move to microscope.g. Then type in a G1 move command with the coordinates you just copied. Because of the fact that G10 offsets are only applied after a move command and the way we want to adjust the offsets in a moment, we need to adjust a second G1 move command in front of this one. Choose a random position nearby, like me here, just one millimeter off in both directions. Hmm, a feed rate of 10,000 is probably a bit too fast. Let's slow it down to 1000. Save the macro and test it. The nozzle should move out of the screen and back to the center position of the crosshair. Then open config.g and take a look at the G10 offset of 2.0. Because we just adjusted the microscope and the macro to match the position of 2.0, this one is already done. Then copy the whole line of the G10 command of tool 1 like you did in the previous tutorial when adjusting the Z offset. My narrow window hides the input field at the top. There it is. Ok, paste the G10 command and switch to tool 1. Move tool 1 over the microscope via the macro. Now start with the Y axis first and jog the nozzle precisely in the middle of the crosshair, while keeping track on the distance you jogged it. The distance has to be subtracted from the existing Y offset. Change the Y offset in the GGEN command at the top and send it to the printer. Verify these changes by executing the macro. The nozzle should move out of the frame and back to the exact Y position you just set. Then repeat for the X axis. Keep track on how far you moved the nozzle and subtract that distance from the existing X offset. Send the changes to the printer and verify by executing the macro again. You can run the macro several times and the nozzle should always come back to the center of the crosshair. I just do a minor adjustment to the offset and run the macro again. This is looking perfect. Ok, you know the drill. Copy the whole G10 command and go back to config.g and replace the whole line of tool 1. Copy the G10 command of the next tool, tool 2, and save the file. Do not restart the printer yet. Pick up tool 2 and move it over to the microscope by executing the macro. Now it's rinse and repeat. Paste the G10 command into the input field at the top and move the nozzle axis after axis in the center of the crosshair. Keep track of the travel distance and subtract it from the existing offset. Verify by executing the microscope macro.
The nozzle should move to the center of the crosshair each time. When satisfied, copy the whole G10 command and paste it into config.g, replacing the existing line. Now the last tool, tool 3. Copy the whole command, save the file but do not restart the printer, switch to tool 3 and move over to the microscope. Jog the nozzle to the center of the crosshair and subtract the distance from the existing offsets. Verify each change by executing the microscope macro. Last, copy the whole G10 command again and replace the one in config.g. That's it. All necessary offsets have been adjusted. After all this, you may ask, where all these little differences in the offsets did come from. Well, speaking for the tool changer and its Bowden tools, for example, the small offsets are mainly a result of the little play when mounting the heatsink. Do you have specific questions about tool changers or would you like me to explain a specific topic about it? Put your questions in the comments down below and I will try to answer it in one of the upcoming videos. If you enjoyed this video and don't want to miss out the next one, be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go. Thanks for watching, see you next time.